Hey guys, how's it going today? Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to be going through Lumion's um, material library, specifically the uh, indoor metal and outdoor metal. Now, typically when I'm doing a render, I will actually import the metal myself. Uh, but in the past, this is something that I had a great amount of difficulty with. Um, so this is going to be a four-part series. Now, as I said, this one is going to be the most basic. Uh, I'm going to go over the very, um, just the minimum details that you need to know. Uh, about metals, but then I'm also going to go into things like uh, the metalness versus the specular workflow, uh, how to import the metals, um, as I mentioned, but then also how to import um, polygon models. And then just a little bit uh, of information about metals that I uh, have kind of picked up. Now, uh, kind of a disclaimer, this is just kind of going on what I believe um, sort of the uh, technical facts about metals are. Um, just from playing around with it, I think I have a pretty good idea of sort of how the maps work, but without actually being able to go and kind of dissect the code myself, I can't say for sure. Um, but yeah, so the first thing that I kind of want to show is that any, um, any material can technically be metallic. So if you had a, if you wanted to make a certain color metallic, and now this is a very, you know, basic kind of way of doing things uh, the way that I'm do about to do it won't even have a real normal map so let's say we just take this uh, this color so this is just the color white now if we turn the reflectivity up to two then now it's a metal something that I have kind of realized is I think that when you're dealing with metals the reflectivity should almost always be at two and if it's not at 2, it, I don't think it should ever go lower than 1.9. I find that uh, anything after 1, while it is metallic, you don't really start to see that. Yeah, you can see it right, right at uh, 1.9 even. It doesn't really look metallic, but then you get that, that metal effect once you uh, crank it up all the way. Uh, now, the other thing you might see is you might see the gloss uh, on some... Uh, some materials dragged up all the way. I'm going to get into that in a little bit, but for solid colors like this, all you really have to know is that anything past point 0.1 won't do anything. I believe that's because once it gets past point 0.1, it starts to affect the color map less, and it actually starts to affect uh, the normal map. So this is something that we're going to play around with, and uh, we'll get more de uh, into detail with it. So what you'll notice, though, is that when I drag the gloss down to point 0.9, you kind of start to fog... Uh, I guess that reflection up a little bit. Um, now, this is actually what I would recommend you do if you don't want something to be as reflective. I know a lot of people have just used weathering, but I don't particularly like using that. Uh, and I can actually show you why if I go outside to my example. I just dropped a shipping container here just because it uh, will kind of help us out when we're explaining a few things. So I'll just put a random metal on. So uh, let's just make it aluminum. So right off the bat, this is it's it's very very reflective I, I don't really want it up to that point uh so what i see most people say is they're gonna go okay well, we'll add some weathering to it so this is aluminum now you know you can add a little bit in here and while you're kind of getting that effect uh this doesn't help you control it as much now like because what you kind of notice here is when i drag it up all the way uh the parts that are sticking out actually get affected the most whereas if i just want to make it less reflective across the board uh then the thing that i find works best is taking it down to 0.9 or so and then you kind of see that some of that uh that glossiness goes away but it, it while it might look a little bit scuffed up it's not losing like it doesn't look completely old which with the weathering technique i find that you don't have as much control over not only where it goes, but I find that it can go, uh, like it can be very overpowering, especially if you don't want any of this kind of like erosion on it, then you can only really go up to about 0.5. And then even then, that's not entirely the effect I want. Um, I do use weathering though, don't get me wrong on that. Uh, it's just that you, I, I think that it's something you kind of have to use in the right situation. So if we were using a shipping container, uh, then yeah, this would kind of make sense. Uh, you would have, uh, it'd be outside and things like that. But it doesn't really make sense to me when someone puts it on like a ref like a fridge because you wouldn't see that kind of weathering on your typical uh, refrigerator in a house. So what I like, as I said, what I like to do is I like to adjust this because um, when you go at one, then it's basically it's saying I believe it's saying it's 100 percent glossy for the color map. And then you can kind of see 
that the only thing that really changes in this area are kind of like the scratches. So yeah, long story short, this is kind of how I would do it. Just drag it down to like 0.8 or 0.9. I wouldn't go anything below that because then you kind of start to get this dull effect. But uh, I think that that's pretty good like right there. Uh, the other thing that you can do is if you take the map scale and you drag it all the way down somewhere like in the zeros, then you effectively remove all of the scratches. And you can also do that by lowering the relief. Uh, but relief, I find, doesn't remove the scratches in the same way. It will remove, it won't make them as prominent, but you will still kind of get this chewed up uh, kind of look to the metal. But as I said, if you just drag it down, then you can kind of hide that. And th this is another one of those things that there's no right answer. This is just me kind of explaining, I guess, some of the steps that I've gone through trying to uh, figure out or just better understand the metals in Lumion. As, since, as I mentioned, this was by far the number one thing that gave me issues uh, when I was first learning the program. So in this particular example as well, uh, I just got this from the 3D warehouse, but these uh, the corrugations were already done. I believe that's what they're called. Um, but basically these, uh, these indents in the metal. So what I'm doing is I'm just using the indoor library to apply a material. Uh, typically, what I find is that using the indoor uh, library is more effective if you've actually made the metal geometry yourself. But if you're doing something like a shipping container, but you just made a square, then uh, I find it's actually best to use the outdoor library. And what I mean is uh, something like this. So uh, typically, th the, the face would just look like this, just a flat plane. Uh, but I, um, and just, just when I was practicing this, so I just use something like this. So what this will do is if you're kind of using an outdoor scene, uh, and this isn't going to be right up in the forefront, this will work fine. I kind of don't like the tile, uh, the tiling that it has, because as I sort of said before, these are s small uh, materials, so they can't tile very well. Um, but if you make it a little bit bigger, and then you can even twist it, so we'll just take the orientation, oh, not the heading, not the pitch. There we go, the bank. <laughs> Just need to play with that for a second. I always get those confused, but so as you can see, you you we are getting some of that uh, some of that effect. And if you just want to do something kind of fast, you're not too worried about it, then this is a completely fine method. Um, but for me personally, as like I said, as a rule of thumb, um, for flat surfaces, I'll just use the uh, the indoor library since they're kind of made to just be put on things like fridges, vases. Um, even like handles, whereas typically with these outdoor ma materials, you're going to get something like this. Um, the problem I do have with doing it where you're just kind of putting it on here is that, as I sort of showed you in the last one, I find that for the image to come in clear, it just has to be way too big. Like, you know, this is way, like it, it's way bigger than it, it would be in real life. So you can kind of tell right away it doesn't look right and it's already tiling. So if I brought this down to something that I think would be like a more realistic scale, so if you zoomed in on this, uh, maybe a little bit bigger than that. So, yeah, maybe like this. So that, to me, like up close, that kind of looks like the the rusted um, kind of prints all over it of the right size, but then you have these like hun almost like 100 tiles, probably more. Uh, and that I just don't find works well. So uh, if you do need to be up close for this, this is where I'd actually say... Uh, kind of import your own metals. Um, going back and talking about um, the what, what I said at the beginning about how I think that the uh, the indoor metals are kind of turned up too high. Uh, in my opinion, the gloss is just way too high on these. And this is something that a lot of people probably don't know about. So they just put it on and they're like, hmm, like the brass looks kind of weird. So another thing, this is way too big. Like these scratches are almost more like dense. So what you want to do is we're going to take this down a little bit. Uh, I like to kind of bring the relief down just because if it's inside, you're not going to get that much. But we do want a tiny bit, maybe even scale this down a little bit more. And yeah, you, you are going to get this kind of, as I said, the tiling. Uh, there's not much you can really do about that. But if you take this from 1.8 and drag it down to like 1.9 or sorry, just 0.9, then you can start to see right away that you kind of get that more of like a, a beat up bronze effect that you'd exp or a brass effect that you would sort of expect in the real life. Um, it's it, it I find that the the indoor metals almost like they're trying to do two things. So 
it's it's got a normal map on it which is making it almost like it's like kind of beat up looking but then on top of that the gloss is turned up to 1.8 which makes it extremely reflective that when it's at 1.8 that also means that the scratches inside of it are being reflected and uh, we don't want that so um that's uh i think all i really need to go into for this one it's a as i said this is very basic I just wanted to get this video out of the way so that when I go um, to do part two and three, we have a bit more of an understanding because in those ones, I will be importing all the metals, which I recommend you do. Um, and I'm going to show you how to just get some around some of the pitfalls um, that I ran into. So yeah, I hope you guys will uh, check out the next video and I will uh, see you there. Bye.